Goroutines are a fundamental concept in Go, providing a way to perform concurrent operations. They are lightweight and more efficient than traditional threads in terms of memory usage and startup time. Are Goroutines the superhero of concurrency, or do they sometimes wear the villain's cape? No, managing a large number of Goroutines can be challenging. This is where worker pools come in. A worker pool is a pattern that controls the number of goroutines that are working on a task at any given time. It helps in resource management by limiting the number of goroutines and reusing them for multiple tasks. In this episode, we'll learn how to implement a worker pool for goroutines in Go. Without further ado, let's dive into the implementation. I like to keep it in a separate file. Let's name it workerpool.go. Let's keep this in the main package. The task is the single most unit of work. We will define a task. Then a function to process the task. Next we define the worker pool and functions to execute the tasks in the pool. Now we will define a task. It is a simple structure. Let's say the data it has is an identifier ID. Next, we define a method process on the task struct. We will simulate a time-consuming operation by sleeping for a couple of seconds. Let's simply print the task ID being processed. Now we define a worker pool struct. It should have a field for the tasks. Next, the number of concurrent workers. These many concurrent goroutines will run at a time. Tasks Chan defines a channel to send tasks to workers. and a wait group for synchronizing the completion of tasks. This will be used to wait for the tasks to be completed. We need a method that receives tasks from the task channel and processes them. Let's define a worker method on the worker pool struct. Let's receive a task from the channel. Call the process method on the task to process it. Now we will signal the completion of a task using the worker group. Next comes the run method. This method initializes the channel, sets the concurrency, creates the go routines and sends tasks over the channel. We will first initialize the tasks channel with a capacity equal to the number of tasks. Then start the worker go routines. Number of workers are set to the concurrency variable.
add the number of tasks to the weight group counter. Send tasks to the tasks chan. Next, close the tasks chan after sending all tasks to signal no more tasks will be sent. Finally, we will wait for all tasks to be processed using the wait method. Now let's go to the main function and use this worker pool. We will initialize 20 tasks. Let's assign all of them an ID. Next, create a worker pool with the tasks and set the concurrency level to 5. Start the worker pool to process the tasks. Let's add a print at the end. This prints a message once all tasks have been processed. Let's run the program. As we can see, it processes five tasks at a time. This works as expected. This example works for one type of task. But what if there are different types of tasks? How do we handle them? Let's convert task to an interface. This interface has a method process. Suppose we have two types of tasks, one to send an email and the other one does some image processing. Let's create an email task struct. It has three attributes, email ID, subject and the message. Next, we implement the process method. Let's change the print. Similarly, we implement the image processing task. Generally, it is an expensive operation, so we add a bigger sleep to this task. Now our worker pool is ready to take two types of tasks. Let's go to the main function and make the necessary changes. We have created a bunch of tasks here of both types. Let's run the program. Yes, it works. It is evident how five tasks run at a time and image processing takes more time. Worker pools are useful for controlling resource usage and improving the efficiency of concurrent task processing. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Golang related videos. Happy coding!